welcome back my name is Anna if you're new here I am so happy to be sitting down and doing this video I like to get straight to the point so if you're here you're here to learn about furniture shopping for your first apartment the reason why I'm creating this video or the reason why I decided I wanted to create this video is that I found the furniture shopping process to be so overwhelming and daunting mostly because it is so expensive and no one tells you what are good price points what you should be looking for, what are the essentials. I experience a lot of different setbacks, fallbacks, and constantly like just trying to figure out what worked for me. And I think through that process, I developed a list of things that I wish I knew, what I feel like was valuable or invaluable to me when I was furniture shopping. I know it's new grad season, so I know like, a lot of y'all are about to go start looking for apartments, or a lot of y'all are excited to furnish your apartments, because I know that was me. I was so excited to furnish my first apartment. And I wrote down, I actually wrote down a fake blog post. I shared it with my friend, and she was like, oh my gosh, I never thought of that. And I think that made me realize, I was like, if there's at least one takeaway that you have from this, I'm okay with that. One, I would suggest you create a rough budget. And I'm not gonna say create a rough budget for every little thing in your apartment, but I would say create a rough budget for the essentials, right? So like my sofa, my bed, I was gonna sit to eat, my desk for work were all a part of my like essential rough budget. I think I budgeted for like maybe like five thousand, six thousand dollars, I don't remember. But expect to exceed the budget, right? Because, you know, with the cost of everything, the cost of shipping, the cost of handling, the, shop, the cost of just things in general, like, and maybe you change your mind on something. Just expect to go over the budget, like, a couple hundred dollars. I know that, like, having that budget helps keep me, like, okay, well, this is what I'm willing to pay and this is what I'm not willing to pay. And just kind of, like, making sure that I was staying close to or within the budget. So, number two, I didn't think of this until my aunts and uncles and everyone was like, do you have a registry? Create a registry. That is the next step. I don't know why like that was just like not an obvious one. I've seen some people use Amazon for their registry and Amazon is cool and all, but you can't get all your essentials with the things you want from Amazon. I know there's so many different places that people shop like World Market, Crate and Barrel, West South. So like create a registry and send it to your peers, send it to your like family members, send it to like adults, we are adults, but send it to more mature adults with who are more established with their finances. They will most likely get you something because when I moved into my first apartment, I remember everyone just kept asking me, what do you need? What do you need? Because they know that like it can be very taxing to try to buy everything at once and like you need certain essentials. So like if there are like a there's like a pot set or a pan set that you really want and you're like, I don't feel like spending that kind of money right now, throw it on there. Someone will buy it for you. I almost guarantee you and share it with people because people are going to continuously ask you what you need when they ask you, hey, what do you need for your apartment? Send them the registry and they'll buy you something. Okay. And now we're moving on to number three. This one is gonna be controversial to a lot of y'all, but do not skip on the essentials. And when I'm what I mean by skipping on the essentials, I mean your sofa and your bed are your two most essential like furniture pieces. It's really easy to skip on the sofa because it's like, oh, I really like this sofa, but it's like a thousand dollars. Look, if there's anything to put your money towards, it's your sofa, and then your mattress, you cannot skip on a mattress. I refer to my bedroom as my sanctuary and like if I had a really crappy mattress I think that I'd be like miserable. Like sleep is important. One of the most essential pieces in your entire apartment is your bed. Do you understand that? I can't hear you! I can't hear you! Okay, now that we understand that, we can continue to move on. I'm telling you, buying your mattress, spending money, bank on your mattress now will save you tons of money in the future. Not only because you won't have to re keep rebuying a mattress, but because you won't have back problems and have to go to the doctor. I know it's like a mindset shift, but I would expect at least, and this is where that budget for the essentials comes into play, at least expect to spend 2K on both your mattress and sofa. Those two things are like the most important, the most important pieces in your entire apartment. This brings us to tip number four. Do not rush the process, please. I know we are constantly inundated with so much information every day, like via our our cell phones just on social media scrolling it can be so easy to be like must and I need to furnish it all at once you do not need to furnish it all at once please please I please I beg of everyone stop buying your entire apartment furniture from Ikea and I know like if you are within a budget and you cannot exceed it I get it I'm not judging you buy it from Ikea but with that being said like 
where I'm at, I could afford to spend on like good or better quality furniture pieces. And so I was just like, my aunts and everyone was like, do not buy all your furniture from Ikea. Because I was trying to rush it because I was constantly scrolling on social media and I was constantly letting that information feed my, my decision and what style of decor I wanted to have. And I don't know why everyone on TikTok has minimalist apartments and it's not really minimalist. And a lot of their apartments just don't look comfortable. They look like staging apartments. I, with that being said, it was just so easy to kind of fall into that trap of I have to make my apartment look like this and I have to make my apartment look like that and you're like constantly being inundated with information and, and you feel anxiety around rushing to finish furnishing your apartment. Most people don't finish furnishing their apartment for like years. I had friends that would be like, oh my gosh, like I hate this rug, I hate, I hate this chair, I hate this desk that I bought and have to buy a whole nother thing. And I was like, and it's not as easy to sell your furniture as people make it out to be. Really taking your time to really fall in love with every piece that you buy for your apartment is super duper important. The moral of the story is don't rush the process because you might not like everything and then you have a bunch of furniture pieces that you hate. It's just not worth it. It's not worth it in the end. Take your time, really think about it and just know that it's not gonna happen overnight. And one of the things that was really overwhelming to me was how expensive furniture is. There are just so many ways that you can find and look at furniture for cheap. And I'm I'm gonna tell y'all, you really should be buying furniture at a discount. There are some companies that don't have sales like that. Like West Elm is one of those companies that don't have sales. But if you are a bougie girl on a budget, I got you. I got you. I get West Elm Pottery Barn, Crate and Barrel, all of that stuff on the low low. I got you. Three things. I bought a lot of my furniture on like holiday sales so memorial day sale is when i bought my mattress i think i got the deal where i got pillows sheet set and the mattress of course all for like i think roughly around 800 dollars. and i thought that was a really good deal that was a steal another way that i saved money was you got oh my gosh i was like looking up like ways i can get um furniture from urban outfitters discounted or whatever and i came across this uh warehouse outlet store called the final cut it's like a big like furniture warehouse outlet store right so they sell all of these things that are no longer in season some of the things are broken some of the furniture is just like you know like didn't really sell there was one in augusta georgia and i went and took a trip i actually made a vlog on that but i took a trip there and it was really nice uh there were a lot of furniture pieces there i know there are a few across the country so i would just do your research on that uh, if you are a lover of west town and you do not want to pay West Elm prices, take your ass to a West Elm outlet store. I took my ass to a West Elm outlet store when I was in Georgia. I bought like three, four pieces for less than, I think, for less than $200 at the West Elm outlet store. I even saw my coffee table, but it was like a darker wood. It looked like it was in mint condition. When I say like the furniture in the outlet store is amazing, maybe a few minor like tears or ribs. Maybe there's some like, it's like maybe not leveled, but you can easily fix that. I was just like so impressed by how much I was able to find there. If I really, really wanted to, if I had known about them sooner, I would have went before I even like came up with a vision for my, like a vision board for my apartment. So I don't want to add text because I feel like I need to say this. There's a lot of stuff. Halfway through filming, I thought I was going to have enough time, but I had a task rabbit come to install or to mount my TV and he drained me energetically because whenever somebody comes into my space i really like i need like a moment so i finished filming it the same day so i look a little more tired and a little more relaxed than i did before but these are the last two points from my list that is going to be linked down below so i hope you guys enjoy what i've learned over the past year do what works for you do what's best for you this is your first space it's about determining the style i came up with a theme <laughs> themed child of the sun because i'm a leo but i knew i wanted my apartment to be warm and welcoming i wanted people to feel invited when they came over but then i ended up adding in colors when i was looking at furniture options i was constantly worried that my furniture wasn't good enough feeling like i wasn't keeping up with like what other people were doing on a lot of social media and tiktok you'll see people in minimalist apartments and like i've seen people who have true minimalist apartments and what you see on tiktok isn't true minimalism it's like excess i don't know but just determine your style outside of social media i would say spend like a week off of social media spend a few weeks off of social media and just kind of be at peace with yourself like i feel like for me furnishing my apartment ended up being such a spiritual experience for me it really allowed me to tap into what i found to be important and every piece has a meaning and that is kind of like why I think that determining your own unique style is uh, super important. Okay, number seven. This is the last one. 
mix highs and lows like your apartment does not need to be all westbound you want your space to look cozy you want your space to look collected and i think the way you do that you do that efficiently and most effectively is by mixing highs and lows some of my pieces are from home goods some of my pieces are from tj maxx some of my pieces are from west elm some of my pieces are from target some of my pieces are from wayfair you should really cultivate it in a way that makes sense right you don't build your closet for your clothes by going shopping all at once you know it takes time to develop your style and to develop a unique uh wardrobe so I think it's similar for your apartment. If you look at it like that, you're adding certain pieces and elements. Every apartment needs a certain, needs an X, Y, and Z element, but it doesn't need to be the same as everyone else. Like you don't have to get the same acrylic table as everyone else unless you like it. Support local businesses, go um, buy furniture if you can from local businesses from around you. It really helps your apartment to look more collected and less like the section in Ikea. Yeah, that's how you get your apartment to look less staged and more lived in and look more cozy. So yeah, basically with all that being said, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I will have links down below for the things that I mentioned. I wrote up a little document. I will attach it. I'll create a folder of all the things that I did or like the things that I created for my apartment before like, you know, when I was furnishing it and like what I used, like the vision boards and all that other stuff so that you guys have an idea. So yeah, hope you enjoy.